Casabel Marsh. Wasn't that the site of a famous battle between Rashigal and Ajul? Yes. Twenty years ago. It's a place that looms large in my life. If we go there, I may remember things that are, perhaps, best forgotten. That's right. We were part of that war. I'm sorry. It's difficult to believe this whole area used to be a dry wasteland. We were taught a great tsunami did this 20 years ago. It was right when the former king of Ajul was leading his army into battle against Rashigal. Wait, Rowan, you were a tactician in that battle, weren't you? Yes, I was. It's hard to believe it's already been so long. This is the place where Princess Carrie died. Noctagal's sister. Even he wouldn't dare to defy her. If she was still alive, Rashigal's history would have turned out quite a bit differently. She must have been a fearsome woman if she could keep Noctigal in check. Quite the opposite. She was a gentle, easygoing soul. Noctigal was always at his kindest around her. But her gentle demeanor masked an indomitable spirit. The meek had no greater ally than her. She even chose to accompany the army as a medic, so that she could save as many lives as possible. A princess working as a medic? She must have been one hell of a woman. Unfortunately, her story did not end happily. Their brothers feared Noctagal would distinguish himself by leading Rashagal to victory. So instead, they revoked his authority to lead the army, just before the battle began. In his place, they sent an incompetent buffoon of a general, who squandered every advantage Rashagal had. Why would they do that? They must have feared Noctagal more than their own enemies. Just as Rashagal was facing defeat, the tsunami came and forced the remnants of both armies to retreat. But Princess Carrie's unit was among the unlucky ones that were caught in the wave. It was a grave error on my part. Amidst the confusion, I didn't notice that her unit was in the path of danger. If I had given her unit clearer orders, Carrie would still be alive. Wait a minute. Were you two together? We were worlds apart in both age and class. But we had pledged our futures to each other. Noctagall was the only one who approved of our union. But that's an old story, and one perhaps best forgotten. I get so nervous talking to people in Olympias. Don't be afraid. They're people just like us. 
Try to speak to as many people as you can. Gotta pump them for info. Information is important, but learning to understand and appreciate each other, that is our top priority. Excuse me, have you seen an elderly woman around here? I was out shopping with my mother, but we got separated. Her hair and eyes look just like mine. Unfortunately, we don't know this city very well. There you are, Lem. What are you doing here? What sort of child is still getting lost when she's 18 years old? Me? You're the one who got lost. Did you forget where we were supposed to meet? Oh, did I? Honestly, I don't know how you keep a nursing job when you can't even stick to a simple schedule. <laughs> it's nice to see that Olympians are as human as we are. No kidding. Carrie? Carrie, it's you. You're alive. Wait, Octagall's sister? Oh, yes, my name is Carrie. But I'm afraid I don't know who you are. You... You don't? I'm sorry. I can't remember anything from my childhood. When I washed up on a beach here 20 years ago, all I could remember was my name. Wait, do you know who my mother used to be? Um, no. I merely met her once before, when I was working with her husband. Oh, are you in the military too? Forgive me for not recognizing you. You meet so many people as a soldier's wife. No, no apologies necessary. It was a long time ago. May I ask where your husband is? He's away on an expedition right now. I haven't heard from him in a long time. But I'm not worried. Ever since he found me 20 years ago, Julius has never broken a promise he's made to me. Mom, could you stop gushing to complete strangers? <laughs> okay, okay. But it is true, you know. Come on, we need to get going. Nice meeting you all. Hey. When the schism was breached 20 years ago, the tsunami must have brought Carrie all the way here to Olympias. Aren't you going to go after her? I... I don't know what I would say to her after all these years. I don't even know how to feel about this. Lady Drissel is faring well. Why not go to the manor and see? Drissel must be worried sick about you! Oh, worried about me? Oh my. I do hope she doesn't perceive me as being that old. Exactly the people I was hoping to see. We just captured one of the soldiers from that airship. 
Wow! How'd you pull that off? Actually, he seems like a pretty strange guy. He actually turned himself in. He said he'd like to speak to Rowan. His name is Julius. Do you know him? Lady Drusel, would it be possible to see him now? You must be Rowan. At your service. And you must be Carrie's husband, Julius. I should have known the conductor would already know the score. You give me too much credit. Carrie and I merely met by chance in Olympias once. My question is, how do you know about me? Carrie had a ring with your name engraved on it when I met her. When I saw her using Calculatrix without a Spyrex, I knew she had to be from the other world. I volunteered for the other world reactor plan expedition, so I could learn more about her past. Why would you risk so much? You already know she loves you. Because I hid the ring from her, the one with your name on it. I didn't want her to have anything that would remind her of her past. I'm a coward who took advantage of her amnesia in order to steal her heart. I saw for myself how deeply Carrie loves and trusts you. It was clear from the way she smiled. Even 20 years ago, I'm not sure I could have ever done anything to make her smile like that. Julius, you must make it back to Olympias alive. Your wife and daughter are waiting for you. Your only sin is abandoning the people who love you. But there isn't any way for me to get back. Not to worry. We will escort you home ourselves. In fact, I insist upon it. However... There's no telling how long the dimensional breach will last. We should hurry. Thank you. Rowan, it's been an honor to meet you. The honor is all mine. So Julius made it back to his family safely? Yeah. Carrie was overjoyed to see him. You should have gone with them. Oh no, that simply wasn't possible. The way my back has been acting up. Well, that won't do. You must take better care of yourself. That voice. I just had to come and thank you all in person. Thank you so much. If it wasn't for you and your friends, we might never have seen Julius again. Rowan, how have you been? My beard's a bit longer, but other than that, not much has changed. And yourself? Apart from a few more wrinkles, nothing. <laughs> Those aren't wrinkles. Those are laugh lines. You seem very happy. I am. You do too. Oh yes. Spending time with so many young folk makes me feel a few decades younger myself. That's wonderful. But do take care of yourself. I will. Thank you. Are you sure about this? Please cheer up! <laughs> How could I possibly think myself unlucky in love when I have three lovely ladies looking after me? Now then, let us be off. I hope I grow up to be someone like you, Rowan. <laughs> 
then you'll need another 50 years of training. It's not as easy as it looks.
Thank you. 